Hello and welcome to the Mutual Fund Show. I'm, Nita, I'm, I'm your host, Nita Chai. And over the next 20 minutes, we'll talk about three or four key aspects of mutual funds. Since we are at the fag end of the year, we'll try and focus on what could be done in 2023 on some of the most talked about aspects, which a lot of you have written to us through the course of the year. I won't say just the last one, one through the course of the year. So just did a little bit of a simulation as to what is it there that is the maximum interest and then therefore trying to ask this to our two experts today, our experts today, Ashit is margin. He's managing partner and CEO of Complete Circle Wealth Solutions. Uh, and Gaurav Avasti, head of UHNI Family Office, Private Wealth Management at ICSA Security. Gentlemen, both of you, thank you so much for taking the time out. Lovely having you. Um, may I start with the first uh, conversation? And that is around how to approach large cap funds, considering that uh, for a, I mean, for a considerable period of time now, we've not necessarily seen large cap funds, uh, regular plans at least, beat their benchmarks. And therefore, the options that we had given to our experts was, should they be avoided in the short term from a market risk perspective? Should there be a systematic transfer plan being done in them? Should people focus on low index funds to beat the expense ratios? Or should people choose flexi cap over large caps? Because a lot of flexi cap funds have a large degree of large cap stock element to them. Shitis, let's start with you. So thank you, Neeraj, for having me here on show. Always uh, too much to learn uh, from you and fellow colleagues who are on the show. So uh, coming to the first question, what we are talking about the large cap side, uh, I agree with you that, yeah, there is a there's underperformance, this is the benchmark. But uh, it's obvious, you know, benchmark, I think, is more active than your active mutual fund. So benchmark in itself is churning fast. Benchmark in itself uh, is, uh, you know, is led by a few companies uh, doing well. Like uh, when we when we reached all-time high, Sensex, out of 30 stocks, 13 stocks have beaten their all-time previous highs, but 17 are still trading. But when it comes to fund, it's been regulated by SEBI that 80% of the stocks has to be in top 100 stocks. And then you are capped by 10% in each every single stock, not more than that. So yes, I somehow feel that uh, uh, rather than going for a pure, pure large cap fund, uh, one can look at index fund or a smart beta fund in index in itself. That's what the strategy should be. Uh, having said that, somebody who's already having a large cap uh, 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 mutual fund portfolio, uh, you know, they can stick around. As uh, you know, there are times when fund doesn't do well, but you know, it's just a it's just a cycle. Sometimes your bets will go right. Sometimes my bets will go right. So I think the holdings are really very good. They're all large capish. So one can look at holding to those positions. For a new investment, whether an index fund or you want to choose a large cap fund, I think what you said is right. Uh, uh, the answer is in the question only. One should do STP only. We are at the peak of market. Uh, at these levels, 12 to 14 weeks STP is what we uh, what we are recommending to everyone that let's not be in a hurry to uh, park money in uh, your own mutual funds. You have right. enough time on your side. Mm -hmm. Take a STP route and look at a low cost product. As rightly said, sometimes uh, all these funds over a period of time, if you save on 1, 1.25 or less of 125 bips on a year, every year, then still uh, the possibility is that you can be in line with the index fund or maybe you can beat the index fund by taking a, a smart beta fund. So that's my submission on how one should approve last guest space. Okay. Gaurav, um, good having you on the show, Gaurav, for the first time. Uh, please tell us, how would you approach large cap funds? Thanks, Tiraj. Uh, thank you for having me in the show today. I think uh, uh, the answer is actually a mix of all the four options that, uh, that you had given us. And uh, typically for the portfolios that, uh, you know, that we manage for our clients, uh, uh, the way we are running the portfolios is a mix of passive as well as flexi cap. So typically, uh, the way we look at it is that uh, the risk of not being in the market is possibly uh, greater than, uh, uh, you know, being in the market. So effectively, if you do nothing, index still gives you that return of, you know, 12, 13, 14% compounding over long periods of time. And uh, uh, historically, if you look at especially the last three, four years, large cap funds have found it difficult to really beat uh, the benchmark. Uh, we were looking at data uh, as of November 8, only about two large cap funds actually managed to meet the uh, benchmark. So the benchmark returns, I think, uh, you know, uh, close to 40, 50% of the portfolio, we, uh, uh, we run through passives. And passives does not necessarily only mean nifty 50, it can be a mix of nifty 50, uh, nifty next 50. Uh, if you believe that the broader markets are going to do better, then, you know, you can also look at some of the equal weighted indices. 
the remaining 50% typically uh, you know we are going through flexi cap uh, mode because we think that the broader markets possibly will do better than large cap uh, i think uh, the way that we are getting clients invested is largely that you deploy about 80% of the intended allocation over the next 5 to 6 months largely mm-hmm. through an stp route and you keep about 20% aside which is more opportunistic or tactical in case you get a correction okay and in case you believe uh, viewers that you have the time and the smartness enough to take advantage of the correction if you are involved in a full time job then i'm sure the the recommendation might be slightly different as well so please keep that in mind gorov um, um, may i ask you uh, can you cite two um, examples of an option in a la- so somebody is looking at largely investing in a large cap category they may choose a you may recommend a flexi cap uh, uh, reco it could be a passive index fund it could be you know what have you but a couple of examples so that people have some take away to go into as they head into 2023 so typically on the flexi cap fund we like the canara beco flexi cap fund and we like the issa prudential flexi cap fund uh, what we are really trying to focus on managers who are growth oriented because we think large parts of the economy uh, will tend to do well over the next few years so we are focusing on people who are bottom up growth oriented and these two really fit the bill for us lovely so flexi cap viewers is is uh, is, is is the view from icici Uh, they are saying do an stp over 6 months uh, and uh, keep 80% of that uh, money in that stp route 20% of the money keep as cash or a liquid fund or what have you uh, for a tactical opportunity should you believe that you can take advantage of that and frankly uh, it's not that difficult if you put a little bit of mind to it though i i would actually say it's not that easy but you may find an option to do so challenge yourself a little bit read out a little bit more and you might be able to do it as well shitish to you again what are the examples so is you you mentioned that you would choose the flexi cap smart beta and a combination of things a couple of examples for the viewers to have a take away so neeraj uh, on uh, on the flexi cap side you know if you actually see the bigger side of the uh, flexi cap funds most of them are actually 90% in large cap only large cap so my point is uh, uh, if i actually want to choose uh, Uh, to give that delta to a client while getting a multi cap fund i will like to go with a focus strategy i like hcfc focus and i will like to complement that growth focus strategy with a contrary view uh, of a value gain to sbi contra so i i like both the fund managers who are managing these portfolios i like the way they have structured the entire portfolio like you look at hcfc focus is 28 29% on the financial side it's 9% on on your it side and then eventually it has added lot of other sectors which are doing well wherein sbi is playing on the infra side on the on the defense side and many other things and it's little low on your banking as well as on uh, pharma and your it side so i would mm-hmm. like to complement these two portfolios because i see from here onward where valuation looks uh, indian markets have done well this is a good thing but i think where valuation looks little stressed i think uh, there are a lot of businesses uh, on the value team should do well so this okay. is one uh, place where i would like clients to look at these two fund and we are we are actually uh, we are actually liking these funds and we are talking about these funds uh, you know so these these are good for people who want to uh, have a have, have a investment in a large cap uh, kind of a portfolio right chitin yes these are good okay. for investments in fact uh, you'll be surprised in hcfc focus 74% is large cap only okay so i'm saying i'm saying uh, uh, you don't have much option as an nsc leader in india right now on a mid cap and small cap space so you have sure. a lot of these companies Uh, got it chitin and uh, on on smart beta side i think uh, icsc to uh, low beta is what uh, uh, one can look at uh, it's such a good fund uh, where i see if you actually want to trade the smart side of the index side then you can add 5 7 percent allocation in that fund got it jaman thank you this solves a large portion i mean there's a lot, this is fairly useful information for a lot of people who are who are who are kind of Uh, putting in that question now the other question is if people both of you mentioned right that do an stp you uh, should you said uh, six uh, uh, rather 12 weeks which is three months gorov you said six months therefore there is a chance of a, or a probability of a volatility or a volatile period or maybe a corrective move as well so should an average investor invest in small cap funds in the first half of 2023 so the options of course that we gave viewers to them that can continue or start an sip but because it's impossible to time the market or avoidable because better to start after the dust of the global slowdown settles down three invest in lump sum because small caps 
will do really well in India. Or D, do an STP. Gaurav, I'll start this with you. Sure. Thanks. So, uh, <clears throat> if you look at the uh, small cap figure, small cap obviously has underperformed large cap over the last one year. And even if you look from a valuation perspective, it is possibly the cheapest index among mid cap, large cap, small cap. Having said that, obviously, small caps are far more volatile. So, uh, lump sum is never really a great idea unless valuations are very, very compelling. So, while mm -hmm. valuations are cheap, but they are not that deliciously compelling right now. Mm -hmm. So, STP makes sense. I think uh, provided that you have a longer term uh, horizon of three to five years for small cap, I think if uh, for the investor, he'd be better off if actually there is a correction that it will help him actually get better valuation. So, uh, 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 from our sense, small caps are not overpriced. They are probably the more attractive part of the market, but the valuations are not so compelling that you, that you do a lump sum. You do an STP and uh, we think you'll make reasonable returns in small caps over the next three to five years. Okay. So, no, don't avoid them, but do an STP. Don't go out and buy a lump sum. Simple Correct. advice, right? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Uh, Gaurav, what are the funds that you might be looking at? So, here uh, what uh, we look at is the Nippon small cap fund and the Kotak small cap fund. We Any reasons for the same? Rating. So, typically, both these funds have long track records. We really love uh, uh, the uh, style of the fund managers. And if you look at the category today, uh, most of the funds are becoming large because of you know previous performances. I think we would rather go with people who have seen the cycles and have the ability to really manage uh, uh, okay. the larger funds. Okay. Shadid, again, same question to you with the same options. So I will not like to recommend small cap to average investor. And obvious reason is that when you buy a multi-cap fund or focus fund or let's say large and mid-cap category fund or a mid-cap pure fund also, you get a small cap exposure. And I agree with what Gaurav has said that it comes with a lot of risk. You know, Somebody who's looking at 7 to 10 years of horizon while packing its funds can actually look at participating in a small cap or mid cap fund. Sometimes the gestation actually becomes very long. If you remember Neeraj, 2017, small cap index has given a return. And over the index, not the fund, has given a return of 56%. And mid cap was 48% now. 2018, the new regulation came, LDCG came. And government of, and we have a safety regulation about the fund categorization. And that year, it was minus 67%. I'm saying, and then it took almost uh, till 2020 post First wave of COVID, then small cap started moving up from August, September onwards. So I uh, I am of a view that it's meant for people with a high risk uh, appetite uh, and a long uh, you know uh, horizon while investing. So I will like that. Yeah, I like a category. I have my participation in small cap. Mm -hmm. but I have long horizon uh, for my small cap allocation. I don't mind keeping it for ten years. So I think uh, you get exposure there and uh, neither is the type of return which it generates, 2 three percent delta over, let's say, large cap or a multi-cap over a period of time. I think for that, the type of risk which you take is much higher. End of the day, you have to evaluate what type of risk you are taking to allocate fund and type of return you want to generate. If you believe in power of commanding, if you make 15% also, your work is done. You make yeah. two times in 10 years. So I'm saying, uh, I think uh, uh, I would like to give small cap to people and we give, which have a little higher risk capital. Okay. So you mentioned you you have exposure to small cap funds, but you park there for 10 years. Yes. Isn't there people who want to do that, Gaurav, uh, Shitaj? What is it that you would recommend? Which funds? So we like SBA small cap and uh, Kotak small cap. Uh, both funds we like very much. And uh, for obvious reason, one is uh, 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 there's a consistency of performance over a period of time. Uh, size mm -hmm. is very... Uh, you know, uh, adequate because in small cap, if you, if you reach 40 15,000 crore, and let's say if you like some idea, for one idea, you need to buy 750 crore. That type of liquidity is not available in markets. So, and third, very important reason, especially for SPI, they have on numerous number of times, they have stopped subscription to their funds. Right now, also, you can't park lump sum whenever the fund size go high. And whenever there's this senior opportunity in small cap, they open it for some time. So, that's, uh, that's what I like about uh, fund houses, mm -hmm. where they are very clear that yes, if they don't see appetite for growth, they don't accept the money. So, you know, these are the three reasons. And if you see in small case space also, the fund with bigger sizes over the last 10 years, I will not quote anything, but one can go and check, has given 15-16% of the money. For sons, funds with adequate size or in this category is able to deliver over the last 10 years, 18-20% of the money. So, okay. I think uh, that's one fund uh, which we look at. Got it. Thanks, Shadid, for that. Um, 
Third point, now we shift focus because a lot of people, of course, need debt allocations and we've done numerous shows on this. But as we wrap up 2023, I thought it was good to revisit and try and understand from you uh, guys both about what should a person do if the person wants to make debt mutual fund investments? What category? With a presumption that the person is able to invest for over three years so that the person also gets the indexation benefits so she's comfortable putting in the money all through the three years or in parts or lump sum in whichever category that you may recommend now shitish let's start this with you what should she do so it's very interesting time for fixed income neeraj uh, the flat is uh, the, the curve is flat from three months to six years five years if you actually see you get the same type of yield from 7.15 to 7.45 uh, in that bracket and uh, interestingly, uh, if you see the benefit right now, somebody is coming in and stay there for three, uh, three years, three months, you get four indexation. So whatever money which you are seeing mm. as a return will be a tax free because you get four indexation benefit, then you get long term capital gain benefit. So that's how it is. So I think somebody who wants to put in lump sum money right now on the fixed income side and someone who's at a high tax bracket, this can give you 10 and a half, 11 percent free tax uh, if you actually add up the tax part and you're getting post tax 7 percent. You can look at short-term fund or corporate uh, bond funds uh, where, where, where there's a 100% uh, AAA allocation which is there. One can look at that. Uh, and if you want to put lump sum money over a period of time, then ask me, we have done this calculation at our end that over five years rolling returns, pick any five years in a row. Gill fund has not given less than 7% return. So rather than doing a RD where you get 6.5% and, and anybody takes as per the tax lab, just do a sit in a guild fund, or let's say a 2028 or 2027 maturity IDFC crystal guild bond index fund. So I'm thinking or Bharat bond fund from uh, you know uh, offers like Edelweiss. So these these are few funds which we like, which come with a very low expense also. In fixed income, if you are working on the expense side, let's say the yield is 720 and you are at 5 to 15 plus expense, your job is done. Sure. In, in post tax, you make 7%. So this is what we recommend that uh, lump sum, look at short term. Uh, for long, uh, if you want to work for three, three and a half years, uh, you want to do a SIP, look at a guild fund or let's say a 2028 or 27 maturity guild fund, you can do a SIP there. And if you look, if you're looking at uh, parking for a short term, then look at ultra short term fund, uh, fund category or a money manager category. There yeah. also, as you said, uh, if you want to keep some powder drive for equity, you are making six and a half, seven percent, which is killer. Okay. Oh, well, so view as a combination, if you indeed want to keep 20% cash as tactical for equity, Shitaj is recommending you could actually use um, his advice. Money. Yeah, his advice on, on on the debt market side as well to make that slightly better return. Gaurav, how would you approach this? Again, as I said, I'll just lay out the ground rules. She's happy to invest for over three years so that she gets indexation benefits. And she's happy doing an STP, SIP, lump sum in whichever category you recommend. What would you do? Or what would you recommend? <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, the world has changed over the last uh, year in fixed income. And uh, while we were in a rising rate environment, largely we were staying with passives uh, because we thought that that is the best, best strategy. And typically we were doing the fixed tenor plans or Bharat bond uh, ETFs or, you know, index funds. But our sense today is with uh, the inflation readings that have come in India plus in the US. Our sense is that most of the bad news is already priced in the price. And from here, incrementally, interest rates should, in the medium term, actually look uh, start should start looking down. When you look at a scenario like this, then uh, we believe that active funds actually start doing well because there are multiple opportunities to really like um, uh, alpha in the portfolio, from credit spreads to you know uh, to taking duration calls. So today, currently, the way we are positioning debt for clients about three years is that uh, you put about 35% in uh, uh, in passive funds, like some of the funds that they mentioned, like Bharat Bond or fixed tenure plans, with PSU, SDL kind of portfolios. Today, you are roughly getting about gross of 735. And as Siddharth mentioned, you'll get uh, post-tax about 7%. Uh, we are putting about 45-50% in short-term funds, typically uh, right now. Uh, so that we don't really uh, take too much risk on the duration side. But tactically, we are about putting about 15 to 20%. We have started putting in dynamic bond funds where we think mm -hmm. that the fund managers can really take a call on longer duration. Uh, and in a falling interest market, typically these funds start doing well. So, so you're doing typically an this 
SIP kind of for a system. STP. So I think you should. Yeah, yeah, you should do an STP over the next three months, pre-April. So you know you get the indexation benefits. Uh, you know yeah, there is still some volatility in the air uh, uh, on fixed income. So uh, you know you can do a two-three month STP, but close it uh, before April to ensure that you get the indexation benefits. Okay, great. Um, and and what kind of funds or what are the funds that you would recommend for yeah, typically all the short term fund for example uh, uh, we have nippon and kotak uh, with us uh, on the dynamic bond fund uh, we are aligned right now with uh, with idfc now bandhan uh, dynamic bond fund uh, typically again uh, these are fund managers that we have tracked and worked across cycles and uh, from a mindset both from a credit point of view or from a duration point of view, we are very comfortable in terms of how they take the funds. Got it. Thanks, Gaurav, for that. Shitij, I missed out on asking you about the fund recommendations. So for the recommendations that you made, what are the funds that people can look at? So for three, three and a half years, they, they can look at short-term fund, and uh, which is ICC short-term fund we like, HDFC corporate bond fund, these are the two funds we like at our end. And one can do their due diligence at their level, but we like these two funds. Then uh, uh, for uh, guild fund, one can look at SBI guild fund and uh, IDFC crystal bond 2022, uh, 2027 or 2028 maturity guild fund. That's what they can look at. At the same time, on the ultra short term side, they can look at uh, uh, Tata Money Manager fund, uh, one fund which they can look at. Uh, we, uh, we like this fund. And uh, uh, Bharat bond fund is there uh, with different, different maturity. So beauty of fixed income is if your tenor is matching your, uh, uh, you know, maturity of the portfolio, then there is no risk of uh, market movement because eventually you are maturing as the paper is maturing. So your market risk, mark to market risk in between might be there, but while the maturity, it's not there. So decide on the funds which you want to park and just map it with the maturity of the paper in which you are parking. So this is what we do at our end. Depending on his maturity, we just map it to the tenor right. uh, where they are doing. Yeah. Okay. Jamal, we are running very short of time, but I have to ask you as a finale, uh, what is it that people should do for an ideal portfolio? Now, assume the investor is an average investor of average age, average income, average saving capability, average investing capability, because we can't tailor make it. So you're kind of doing it at an average aggregate level, right? So Goro, I'm starting with you on this one. Create an ideal portfolio, percentage allocated wise to equity, uh, within equity what, debt within debt what, and if it's a hybrid, then hybrid. Sure. So, uh, you know, uh, a normal average investor, I would really take as a 50-50, 50% debt and equity to really, you know, uh, cut his risk as well as, uh, you know, get reasonable return. That's standard and, across uh, times or is it specific for this time? So typically, uh, at this point of time, see, normally based on how valuations play out, this may range between 40 to 60 percent. Okay, right? currently are far more neutral uh, okay. where valuations are. Sure, please continue. Uh, yeah, so at this point of time, the equity part of the portfolio, the way we are really looking at it is that uh, you would have about 60 percent exposure to large cap, close to about 15 percent exposure in mid and, uh, and uh, 15 percent in small cap. We have added about 5% in international funds and tactically at this point of time, uh, we have also added about 5% in, uh, uh, you know, in a mix of gold and silver funds because we think that the dollar index is really picked up and uh, uh, this may, uh, the precious metals will also do well over the next uh, uh, couple of years. Okay. Uh, debt, uh, you know, as I said in the last question, is typically about 35% in passives, uh, three to four year kind of maturity, uh, about uh, 45 to 50% in short term, and the residual 15-20% in uh, dynamic bond funds. Got it. Shetish, what about you? So, I would like to give you a 60-40, 60 on the equity side, 40 on the debt side. I see that your return, irrespective of you being a little uh, low on risk, uh, uh, being average uh, savings are there. Your return should be in the range of close to about the nominal GDP. So I would like to have him around 11% of overall returns where I see that a, a mix of balance fund in the uh, equity side, uh, uh, index fund and a multi-cap fund. I will not like to give him my aggressive portfolio because he might, uh, uh, because markets may uh, go down south while he started investing and he, may, he might end up saying that 
मेरे लिए तो एफ डी ही ठीक है सो आई डोट वॉन्ट इन टू बी दिचुएशन आई वॉन्ट टू गिव इटल सेफर बेट ऑन इक्विटी साइड ऑल्सो एंड ऑन द फिक्स इनकम साइड एज सेट बाई गौरव इट्स मिक्स ऑफ थ्री इयर टू फाइव इयर मेच्योरिटी वॉट आई विल लाइक टू गिव And it's a very sweet spot for people who are participating right now in fixed income. You can make six and a half, seven percent on fixed income, and with this type of portfolio of balance index and uh, uh, your uh, um, focus fund, you can uh, generate thirteen percent, four and a half, thirteen percent there. So average of close to about eleven percent is what I am targeting. Ten point five to ten point eight percent where client can get return post tax uh, on the overall portfolio. Got it, gentlemen. It's been lovely. It's great learning and and great service for a lot of people. Who might be rethinking or might thinking about how to go about redesigning their portfolios if they need to. So I'm sure this will help all of them. Gaurav Shetaj, thank you so much for joining us and giving us your thoughts. Yeah, thank you so much, Dheeraj, for having us on the show. The pleasure was ours, viewers. Thanks for tuning in.